hello so let's try adding one delegate and one function with the help of delegate call so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to define one very simple method here the method is going to take one integer parameter it's going to check whether it's greater than 10 or not and then it's going to return boolean value also and then we'll try to call that method in a simple way so we'll have a very normal method but since I'm going to call that method inside static void main, I'm going to define that method as a static because I'm going to call that method by myself. So in this project, I'll define static, a method returning Boolean value, and let's name this as a check. And then I'll take a parameter integer i over here. And then a return, maybe something called as i is greater than 10 or so compile the code and in general you can very well give a call to check method pass on suppose 20 as a parameter collect the result into boolean result and then print on the console a result and console.read line finally so that we can pause user on the console itself run this you get true and code executes very successfully all good now point to note here this 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 example has got nothing great written as such we just tried to write a method we call the method we got the reply we printed the reply now thing is we would like to call this method now with the help of delegate so just like the way we used delegate for events some time back for lambda expression i'm going to call using delegate this method so how do i do it so let's try adding one delegate here so I would like to have a delegate which points to a method which takes integer and which returns boolean value. And to get this thing done, I'll add one delegate here. So let's add public delegate, a delegate which points to a method returning boolean. So let's put here boolean. Let's define a delegate name as my delegate, similar to event handler in case of click event. And then I want a delegate which will take a parameter or which, which will point to a method which will take parameter of type integer i so this is our delegate this is our pointer definition and now i'm going to create one pointer object by myself so let me use here my delegate of pointer equal to new my delegate we expect to use a method here let's have a method called as check and then we'll specify that is let us not give a call to check function directly let's give a call using pointer if you notice this Normally CLR gives a call to a pointer, but here I'm going to give a call pointer call by myself. So I'm calling pointer. I'll expect parameter like integer and I'll be returning boolean which I'll collect in turn into result. So again you run, you get result out here. This is very, very good uh, uh, result. So again point to note here. What happens is I defined, I called the code by myself sometime back. Now I'm calling it through my pointer. So, if at all, uh, if you if you uh, notice, if at all we use my delegate like pointer, then what is the benefit that I get over here? Do I get a performance benefit? Can I observe the performance benefit then? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to leave the printing part aside. You already know the result now. I'm more interested in how much time this takes, the execution of the code. So here is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to keep the pointer aside and give a call to the check function one more time by myself. And let's try to observe what is the time difference whenever the call goes to check function also. So I'm going to use a very nice object here in .NET, which is called as a stopwatch. Stopwatch class comes from a namespace called system.diagnostics. So I'll say stopwatch watch equal to new stopwatch and then watch dot start here so when the watch stopwatch starts we'll call the check method then we will stop the watch the functionality that we are trying to execute itself is so small that it will not even take a millisecond so then we'll anyway print the result but then we, I'll put over here a result is equal to so and so. 
and then we'll try to convert this into string. But then at the same time, I need to print the time taken. So I'll put here time taken is equal to maybe let's say bracket zero. And the time taken will try to print here watch dot elapsed ticks. Note it here. As I said, seconds or milliseconds may not be of any help because the functionality itself is very small. So I'll use here the lightest unit called as elapsed ticks. I will print that on the console. Here we go and see without calling using pointer how much time a normal check method takes. We are just going to go and run this one one time. Run F5. So we get time here. That is time taken is 352. Result is equal to 2. So I'm going to just keep a note somewhere over here. That is a normal call has taken 352 as a time. Now let's try calling using pointer. So I'm going to change the code here and I'm going to ask here comment this code paste it. I'm going to call using pointer now. Again compile the code and run the code over here. This is taken 626 units which means this is obviously more to what normal call was. So it was like 626 or something. I just tried to put a rough figure here around 600. So using a delegate, it was like 656 or so, which is insane, which is again very, very uh, uh, huge in, in, in terms of size. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the method name itself, which means I'm going to plan now anonymous method. Remember this, that if it's anonymous method, compiler's job increases, not runtime's job. So I'm going to cut this. This is the method which returns boolean and which takes integer i as a parameter. So how am I going to give a call to? Just like the way we used earlier event delegates. I'm going to ask now, this is the method without a name. I'm going to ask compiler to give a name. And here in the code, I'm going to ask now pointer, please point to this method without a name now. Now, if those who miss the video for events and delegates, I insist them they should watch this and understand lambda expression syntax. So right now we have got anonymous method here, a method without a name, compiler gives a name. And then to point to that method, I have a delegate here. If you notice, still the method takes a parameter integer and returns a boolean value and my delegate already has a signature which compiler anyway knows we already have defined here a delegate which returns or which points to a method which returns boolean if at all you try try to take some different parameter out here suppose suppose string s then that's going to go and cause a problem because this pointer was never meant to point to a method with two parameters it was always point it was always supposed to point to one parameter method that is integer parameter. And now I am going to go and compile the code which means method generation is done and then give a call to this method. Now the time taken is 382 over here. So again I am going to one put now using let's say anonymous method also. This is taken 382 as a size. Still this is more to the normal call that we have got. Now what I'm also going to do is, I'm going to go and comment this code, put one more time. Keep a note here, we're calling still using pointer. But then this time, I'm not going to use delegate. And then as maybe you have correctly guessed it, I'm going to use now a lambda expression out here. So my pointer is pointing to a method without a name, for which I do not know what's the parameter. Compiler will find out using delegate. I do not know what is going to go and return. Compiler is going to go and find out based on top of delegate. And then I'm just going to go and give a call to a pointer over here. And then that method will be calling this method without a name right now. So run this code again. Run. And run the code now. And the time taken is suddenly 298 is way less compared to what we already have used. So using lambda expression, 
we have got this code. This is 298 was the figure that we have received. Which means suddenly there's an improvement in the code. First time improvement is what we can see here. This is one of the beauty of you can say using lambda expression. Can I even improve this further? So if at all we go for using maybe further code. Do I really require to use my pointer all the time? Do I? Absolutely no. You don't have to even define a pointer by yourself. So I'm going to again copy paste it here. Default since .NET 3.5 what Microsoft gave you is you do not even have to define such kind of pointers. If there is any method which you feel that the method returns you something also you can always use a func pointer. So to point to a method which takes some parameter and returns something use func pointer. If there is any method which takes a parameter but does not return you anything which means void then use action as a pointer. So how does this func pointer work? So func pointer is going to ask you some parameters. Observe the parameters. If you just notice the last call over here. If you notice this there are 17 overloads. If you notice there are up to 16 parameters which can be passed and one output parameter which can be expected. So I am interested only in this one right now. I am going to pass on one input and I am going to expect one output. Input is of type integer, output is of type boolean. So I will specify here input integer and output boolean. And I am going to define this new func pointer pointing to this method right now. You can also use this func pointer in this way as well. Which means same thing func pointer even if you replace it here or even if you replace it here or even if you replace it here func pointer equal to func pointer and check that's also going to want to work in a very nice way but if at all i start using func pointer now and i'm going to give a call to the pointer let's see what happens now now this has taken 372 or so so using lambda with func this is around 2372 or so which means so far lambda alone itself was very good lambda with func actually did not work very well for us however you can calculate the average and maybe you can find out like by multiple number of runs that this one will be better prove it then if at all it's going to be better also so what normally func does behind the scene is is going to want constant rather whenever we start using lambda expression is going to go and build a, something called as expression tree behind the scene. Expression tree is a mechanism to execute uh, the code in some order. So expression tree is like compiler decides, it's it's obviously at the time of compilation, you can convey like maybe let's say I am going to go and create, rather you, you can convey that build expression tree for me. Runtime is going to go and build the expression tree for you. Which means a fastest way or strategy decided to execute the code in a faster way. I mean to say, I'll just give you an example. If you have to travel from A place to B place, and if at all you don't know the way, then normally in the first attempt, what you may try to do is you may try to ask people how to travel and which way to travel. Maybe you will reach little slow. But then once you know the way, you may find some shortcuts to reach to that B place or so. Exactly similar way we will do it. If at all, we are calling a method. First of all, the method is going to go and get executed. Imagine the piece of the or any, any piece of code if you pick up. Every line can be actually categorized as a normal statement. It can also be categorized into something called as conditional statement. But then based on the condition, we can have branches, maybe let's say A branch and B branch. And based on the branches, we may execute some piece of code. So point to note here, that is, I may have a, a code which can be executed in a different manner by sorting the statements in some specific order. So can't we execute the code in an optimized way? And that's where expression tree comes up in picture. So to build that tree is going to go and take some time. So, what is it that we are planning to do now? We are going to want to ask compiler, that is compiler, please create an expression tree for me. Then, we are going to hold that expression tree. 
then normally expression tree or this optimized code or optimized or organized code is going to get converted into native form and then that native code is going to go and run but can't we just ask once that is before we even execute like we are going to go and measure time for a compilation execution can't we just go and execute the code only and pre-compile before we execute it now before confusing you more what i'm trying to do now is i'm going to take a little action here so i already have a func here let me put it in this manner so right now you did see lambda expression you did see func delegate code is better reason behind that is like the 298 for example why we why did we receive it because we asked runtime to optimize the code execution using lambda expression we asked a runtime to basically pre-compile the code and we asked compiler to basically exit rather we asked runtime to execute the code later on which means the time like 298 that you saw that was for creating a tree which means create or arranging the statements in such a manner so that the code executes in a better manner then compilation of the code in native form and then running the code which is obviously runtime's job so three actions were taken and that's the reason we got the result which is like 298 also but then can we even optimize this much more and we can by holding the tree so imagine if we create the tree programmatically if we go and compile the code programmatically and if at all we just measure the time for execution will it be better yes how so we are going to go and use now one more type here it's called as expression which will come from system not link you dot expressions and then we are going to go and ask now create a tree for such kind of a func type i'm going to give a name over here that is tree suppose a tree which will point to a method which returns something and then if this is the tree that we have got which will point to a method and last statement always returns something which means i greater than 10 is return value ultimately so i am going to ask now get the tree compile the tree and if you see when you compile the tree look at the statement here this compiles the lambda expression described by the expression tree into executable code which means i am interested in measuring the execution time out here i am not interested in formation of a tree so can't we just pre-create this then you compile this and the compiled expression tree will be made available into one func pointer then for you so what i'm going to do now i'm going to again take func pointer and i'm going to give a name to it as pointer like as usual so notice this sometime back it was only pointer pointing to a method but this time it's a pointer pointing to a method which is already in native now and then we are just going to go and measure the time taken for execution and if you notice this and if you run the code just look at the time taken now the time taken is right now 11 which is way less compared to the normal execution time that we have seen so far so this is lambda with expression and the time taken is right now 11 and this is very very insane that time taken for execution and there is no comparison between any 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 of it and expression tree but then this is going to go and happen anyway during execution which means it's just that we are measuring the time taken for execution so we are not considering this time but when is this time spent this time is anyway spent in a main method right so if you calculate the total time taken in the main method it actually remains same but then when it comes to time uh, comes to execution like execution time then execution time is less because we are only measuring that and we have taken much of the complex part before the measurement happens so where is the benefit that i get here so if you consider main as a method i don't see any benefit but then just keep it in mind imagine if you keep on calling this pointer 20 or this this execution time you keep on passing this value suppose maybe let's say one lakh number of times which means you call this compiled expression tree one lakh number of times 
I can assure you that you will always get 11 for each of the iteration. So if at all we keep on calling this pointer, which is pointing to a compiled expression tree, then it's going to contain 11 or less than 11. And then that's, that's going to be like the creation of a tree and compilation of a tree is a one-time effort that you will put up. And then execution will always take 11 or less. But if it is anything before that you pick up, anything before this, 11. We'll find out every time it's going to go on cost us same, which means every time it's going to go on either create a tree, every time it's going to go on, maybe let's say either create a method for us, every time it's going to go on cost, let's say 352, 382, 298 and so on. But then instead of putting 1 lakh number of times into 298, 1 lakh into 352, 1 lakh into 382, instead of that 1 lakh into maybe let's say this 11 is always and always optimized a solution for us which means if you use expression tree for a single time call it's not going to go and help you a lot but then if you use this expression tree for calling some code in a repetitive manner in iterative manner then the expression tree is going to go and help us a lot so this will bring us to end of this concept which is called as expression trees and lambda expressions